Woo! Oh my God. Have y'all seen the interview with Cat Williams and Shay Shay? Ooh, it got juicy because Cat Williams came for everybody's neck, but we're gonna talk about it right now from a licensed therapist perspective. Hey, hey, everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Keandra Jackson, licensed marriage and family therapist. If you're new here, hey, but if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here. You already know how my review videos go. Full disclaimer, before you watch this, you need to go on over to Shannon Sharp's YouTube channel and watch the full clip of Cat Williams and Shay Shay because this conversation got real juicy. Now, I'm not gonna sit up here and lie. It was two hours. <laughs> In 46 minutes, I stayed up past midnight watching it last night, but it was well worth it. I'm not going to sit up here and lie, but go ahead, go on over there, spin the block, and then come chit chat with me in the comments. First of all, do you think Cat Williams is lying? Let me know in the comment section. And also number two, what did you think about the whole interview in general? Because there's some things I want to talk to you guys about that stood out to me, and we're about to get into it. Now, when I say Cat Williams came for everybody's neck, I literally mean it. This man emptied the whole entire clip. He talked about Ricky Smiley, Cedric the Entertainer, Steve Harvey, Martin Lawrence, T.D. Jakes, P. Diddy, Earthquake, Faison, Michael Blackson, Wanda, Harvey Weinstein, Kevin Hart, Luda. I mean, everybody, nobody was safe. And when I tell you he went in on the first like 10, 15 minutes, I'm talking about Shay Shay read his bio and intro him in and then he started going in. Blah, 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 blah. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I had to call my sister. It's like, bruh, are you watching this? Because this is crazy. He is going in on everybody. Now we all know that Cat Williams is an amazing comedian. If you have not seen his work, his specials, or seen him live, you need to go ahead and do that because bruh is genuinely hilarious. I'm talking about, you know how there's levels to laughter, there's levels to funny. This man be having my stomach hurting, billowed over laughing, okay? That's how funny I think Cat Williams is. But one of the things that he said in this video, actually he said a whole bunch of things that I need to break down, but one of the things he said was, and I quote, I came into this business saying I was going to expose. Ooh. And we know he has had tons of moments over the years with different people where he has also gone for blood on their platform, on radio shows, and all of these things. And it's really interesting to me because this conversation that he had seemed like he was holding this in, baby, for a very, very long time. I don't think there's anybody who can empty the clip <laughs> and talk about all of these different people, comedians, and especially in his industry the way that he did and didn't have that kind of like billowing over and ruminating on the inside of him for a very, very long time. And if he just said that he came into this business because he knew he was trying to expose, he exposing. Okay. Now, I don't know if all of the things that he said is true, is valid, lies, truth. I'm not here for all of that, but I do know that he said a lot of the things that he said with conviction. I do know that he said a lot of the things that he said with certainty. And at first I was like, cat is drunk <laughs> because I seen all of these little clips on the Shea Room, on the Jasmine brand, on social media because it was trending. And then people reached out in my DMs and was just like, oh my God, you got to talk about this from a licensed therapist perspective. So I was like, okay, let me go and watch it, right? And so when I was watching the short little clips on social, I was like, he's drunk. That's why he's saying all of these things. But when I watched the full clip, and that's why you got to watch the full clip. Some of y'all just be talking and going off of these little one minute, 30 second clips on social media. And that's not valid. But once I watched the whole video, I was like, oh, bruh has been through some things and he has seen some things in this industry and he's not willing to be silenced. He talked about him being blackballed because he had a lot of information. He knew a lot of knowledge and he knew a lot of secrets, which clearly he does, right? Going into this conversation, he really answered all of Shannon Sharp's questions with ease, right? There wasn't anything that he seemed uncertain about or unsure about. I was just blown away that how he came for every single person. I think him keeping all of this in for a while and this being the moment where he was just like, F it all. I'm about to spill all the beans. I'm about to spill all the tea. I'm about to give y'all the real and the raw because there's other people who's coming on Shay Shay and other platforms saying things that were not true and was not valid. Now the whole thing was Cedric the Entertainer still in his end of the show clip and his end of the show joke and all of that. I went back. <laughs> 
uh, to Comic View, right? And watched the clip in question with Cat Williams. And then I watched the clip in question with Cedric the Entertainer. Now, there were absolutely some similarities. And when I watched it from the vantage point of like, is this something that Ced would say or is this something that Cat would say? It kind of gave me the feel that it was something that Cat would say. Also, the joke wasn't exactly the same. I was expecting the joke to be like word for word or even verbatim. And we were going to be like, whoa, he really stole Cat Williams content, you know? But it wasn't that way, to be honest with you. There were elements of it where I was just like, I can see the similarities, but it wasn't exactly the same. But honestly, that still doesn't make it right because it really got me thinking about intellectual property. <laughs> because in this social media age, in this era, y'all love to steal people's content, their information, their videos, their copy, their written stuff, their posts, taking people's name off of it, making it seem like it's your own. We're in this age where people do that a lot. So I can't even imagine back in whatever year it was, 97, 98, <laughs> where social media and the internet wasn't that big, how people were stealing stuff back then because there wasn't cameras and proof really like it is now. But think about how much more that's happening now. I have friends and colleagues where people have stole their whole copy on their website, their books, their video. This video right here is my intellectual property, right? And so I even have people who I had to send letters to from my attorney <laughs> because they tried to steal content from me and still my logo and still all different types of things from my business that we have to send a cease and desist. I completely get it how when it's your baby, when you created something, when it's your craft, when it's yours and somebody tries to come and take it, ooh, it feels a way, right? And you will go to bat for that very thing. Now we've all heard and seen that Cat Williams was like technically blackballed from the industry and that's why he's probably not as big if we can say that, as he could have been or should have been, because he even talked about how there were secret conversations, like literally he said Illuminati <laughs> conversations, where it was like, if you do these things, if you say these things, if you engage in these sexual activities, if you basically sell your soul, you can be rich, you can be famous, you can make however many millions of dollars. And he was like, no, I operate from a place of excellence, and integrity, and I want to get into them pearly gates, okay? So when he said the number one job of the person who sold their soul is to act like they didn't do it, I said, oh, he talking. <laughs> because we all know that this industry is very, it's a lot. If y'all don't know, for like regular folks who are not in the media and entertainment, it can be spicy. And I'm talking about for everybody, comedians, actors, rappers, athletes, anybody who's really in the limelight, there's some real dark things that can happen in your career if you're not rooted, if you're not grounded, right? And if you don't know who you are, like I can remember conversations that Maya, the singer, had in interviews and she said, look, I love Jesus. I wasn't trying to sell my soul. I wasn't trying to sleep with who they wanted me to sleep with. And so they didn't allow me to get as big as I could have been because I wasn't willing to do certain things. And so the gatekeepers that Cat Williams talked about is a real thing, y'all. There are certain people in places and positions that have power and authority to say, yes, this person is going to do all of the things and they're going to make all of the money. And then these people don't want to succumb to our rules, our regulations, our authority. So we are going to do everything in our human power to suppress their career, to suppress who they are. But if you're really a believer, huh? you're protected. But that's a different conversation for another day. It really honestly seemed like Cat Williams was really annoyed with the fact that people took shortcuts. He called them shortcut takers. <laughs> I feel like I'm a low-key steal that because that's good. He called them shortcut takers. That means you wasn't really willing to put in the time, the energy, the effort. Cat said he read 3,000 books in a year. I, I, <laughs> That feels a little embellished to me, especially when you're talking about you were eight, nine, 10 years old doing this. Is, and this is pre audio books, okay? So that feels a little outlandish. But if you are someone who loves to read and is knowledgeable and who wants to put in the work and develop their craft and write your own jokes and perfect those jokes to different audiences, that's very different than having someone else who didn't have that grind, that energy, who have other people write their jokes 
who just feel like their name can carry themselves no matter what audience they're speaking in front of. And so he really seemed like a hard worker, to be honest with you. I was very shocked at the things that he said about his upbringing. I didn't know that he grew up in a very religious family. I, I think he said his family was Jehovah Witness. I didn't know that he experienced all of these different things and clashes and he left his home when he was like 12, 13 years old. Baby, you a minor, you a baby, where are you going? Even if you had money because you was out here doing the most and working and probably stealing like he said he was, even if you did all of that, man, like how much of a setback at that time was that to not be nurtured and be around people that you love and literally be homeless, right? And move yourself all the way to Miami, Florida, that's a, that's wow. I can't even imagine being that young and being on my own and trying to really navigate through life and figure out what that's supposed to be. Obviously, he got to where he needed to get to, but that still is a lot for a 12, 13 year old. I can guarantee he's seen some things that he probably shouldn't have seen. <laughs> he was some places where he shouldn't have been. He did some stuff and was exposed to some things that he probably shouldn't have been in, right? At 12 and 13 years old. That also led all of that up to where he is now. You know, he can use all of these stories and real life personal experiences to really craft and relate to people, relate to audience and share with authenticity. And this is why I always say like, we really don't know celebrities. Like we think we know them because we see them on TV. We follow them on social media. We think we know all about their life. And we really don't know what people be going through or what they have went through until they're able to share and tell pieces of their story. And what I loved about Kat was that he was very, very thoughtful and intentional about his language. If you really watch the interview, Shay Shay would ask him a question and he would take a few more. He might take a sip, you know, a water or alcohol, the cognac. <laughs> and it seems like he was really trying to formulate his thoughts. And though it felt like he was just spraying things out when he was talking about other people, he was very intentional about the words that he used, the things that he said, the things that he really didn't say. And I also found it interesting that he was very protective of the people that he seemed to have helped financially. Shay Shay asked him about the Migos and about helping other comedians who may not have had financial resources and he would literally send people to go give them a stack of money and they didn't know where the money came from. You know, he talked about like leaving money and blessing people in certain cities that he would attend as a way of paying his tithes, you know. So when you are good hearted like that and when you really want to help other people, he adopted like seven kids or whatever the background story is. When you really try to use your stuff for good, you ain't got to be on platforms telling everybody everything that you did. Because guess what? God saw you. Because <laughs> guess what? God knows what you did, right? And he knows that if you did it from a pure heart or not. So I thought that that was very interesting because he went for blood going in on everybody saying people didn't have sold out shows, people dressing like women, people are being inappropriate sexually, all of these different things. He said that with ease, but then he was very protective of the things and the people that he helped financially. It was almost like he didn't want to ruin their reputation or career, which was so interesting to me. So while I can say a lot about this interview, a lot about this conversation, it's trending like crazy right now. And I honestly think that this conversation is going to evolve drastically because Cedric the Entertainer is already responding back. I just seen this morning, Ricky Smiley already responded back. I'm waiting to see if Diddy and Kevin Hart and Steve Harvey and all of the other people that he put on blast is going to respond back as well. And if they do, I can see them doing more interviews and conversations and maybe even sitting down with Shay Shay again to really get to the bottom of this whole feud. But it's very clear to me that Cat Williams is not in nobody's clique. And if you really think about it, you would think he would be in the clique, in the know, trying to say good and wonderful and amazing things about Steve and Sid and Faison and all of these Kevin Hart's and the people who really are killing it right now in a good way <laughs> uh, in their career. You would think he would want to align and side with them, but that really shows you how the game works. Because at the end of the day, he like, regardless of what people say, regardless of if people literally want to kill me or not, which 
after this interview, I don't know what's going to happen. I hope that he is protected and covered, but you can absolutely tell that some stuff is going to hit the fan. So as things start to unfold and evolve, I might come back and do a part two on this. So thank you so much for watching another video on my channel. I hope you'll stick around and watch some more of the celebrity that I have on my channel. And I will see you next time. Bye.